well. Thank you so much for staying with us. And thank you to Bull Country Compost for sponsoring our show. Well, like I said before the break, uh, we have a few more questions to answer. Um, So first off, Barbara had some dogwood issues. And a lot of folks... um, plant dogwoods. Everyone loves a dogwood. um, And there are several different kinds. A lot of you right now are looking for pink or red dogwoods. Um, They are on back order. So we are still trying to get those in. Um, But if you purchased a dogwood, um, maybe this happened to you years ago, maybe it's happened to you this spring. Um, And the dogwood is not looking great. Dogwoods always have a little bit more transplant shock or just shock from new planting um, than some other trees do. So if you have purchased a dogwood and Barbara, that's what she had. She had purchased a dogwood um, this spring and um, she is having some issues with the leaves starting to curl. Um, The first thing I always ask everyone is make sure it's not too deep. Dogwoods and other plants as well, but specifically dogwoods, they hate to have wet feet. So if you, you know, so many times when we're planting something, you want to make sure it's in there really good. And so you dig that hole deep and you put the the plant down, you know, you take the pot off, of course, you put the plant down in the hole and you pack that soil in there really good. Well, if your soil first off is heavy clay, that's very, very hard on new root system to take off in that heavy clay soil. So what we recommend, um, and this is really for any plant, but specifically dogwoods. um, And if you did this and you planted this year, it's still not too late to rectify the problem. Pull the plant back out of the hole and let some loose dirt fall down in And I always recommend using some Bull Country compost at this time to mix in with that soil at the bottom of the hole um, for a couple different reasons. Um, It's nice and it's loamy and it will help the root system take off more quickly. It also acts as a fertilizer for you. So it's going to be a twofer. Um, Also, it will help break up that heavy clay soil that's in there. So then the rest of the soil that you had taken out of the wheel uh, out of the hole put half of it in the wheelbarrow throw the other half in your compost pile mix the bull country compost with it evenly like you're going to mix up some cookies and use all that as your backfill i also like to use some aspoma's biotone um, as i'm sprinkling it into the hole as i'm backfilling um, it's really going to help that root system take off also if the plant has been in a pot for a long time make sure that you break up that root system at the bottom to help it take off in that hole and you're going to find out that it does much better remember also specifically with your dogwoods um, make sure that you're planting high i recommend a minimum of two inches above grade Um, And then you can slope your backfill up to it um, so that you are covering all that side root system. But, you know, pack the soil in there good that is mixed evenly with that Bull Country compost and and slope it up to where the soil was in the pot. And you will find that you have much better luck with that. Also, mulching around the tree is always a good idea. That first time you mulch, using the Bull Country compost is ideal. um, Because again, as it rains, it's going to pull the nutrients that are in the Bull Country compost down into the hole um, and help that root system take off more quickly. Now, it is important if we are, if it's dry, that you do water. You just don't want to overwater. So what we usually recommend, if we are not having really hard rains, that the first week you water every other day and you water about five gallons each time you water every other day. And then the second week, you're still going to do the five gallons, but you're going to do it every third day. But you're going to skip if we have a hard rain because you don't want it to over you don't want to overwater it and some people again they try to love them to death and they're, they're out there watering five gallons every single day and they drown the plant so you want to make sure um, that you're not that you're not doing that the biotone and the bull country compost together will act as your starter fertilizer 
Um, so you don't need to fertilize right now unless you have a very alkaline soil. Remember your dogwoods um, really like to have an acidic soil. So Hollytone is your fertilizer for them. But when you're putting on your Biotone to get started and you're using the Bull Country compost, those will both help acidify. But if your soil was extremely alkaline, maybe adding a little bit of a soil acidifier will help it take off a little bit better also and start to change the pH of that soil so that the longevity of the dogwood will be much better for you. And then watch it on a regular basis. When you're watering it every two or three days, you know, really watch the foliage. Don't let it get too far, you know, looking bad before you take action on something. Because remember, a stressed plant, which they're going to be somewhat stressed, you know, doing the planting, um, is are more susceptible to insects and diseases. So you really want to make sure that you are watching for that. Um, so the other issue that we have found this week are mosquitoes. And we talked a little bit about this last week, but mosquitoes this week have really gone crazy. And so remember um, that you want to make sure that you are protecting yourself, your children, um, and you want to do it all naturally. So we have some great products at the store. We have bracelets um, that actually are for your ankles or your or your wrist um, that you can use um, that are all natural. We also have um, a spray for your skin um, that is vanilla and lemongrass oils. Um, so that's a great safe one to use. Most people, I would say 90% of all of our customers are repeat buyers of this product. Um, and it's Medela. It is works great um, for most people. There's very few people that says it's not really um, helping them, you know, battle the mosquitoes. And, and most of those people that say that it hasn't helped them, they say nothing out there has helped them. They just get eaten by mosquitoes no matter what. But like I said, about 90% of our customers um, repeat. Um, they're saying, you know, they're out at the lake. Um, they're camping. Um, they do not have any issues with the mosquitoes. So it's a great product. But also out around the patio, remember we've talked about the mosquito beater. Um, a great product comes in a ready to spray that you just hook right onto your hose and also as a granular. Now, some of you have also um, been starting to see the cabbage lopper caterpillar. Um, so if you are starting to see the cabbage lopper caterpillar, um, you want to make sure that you jump on that quickly. Um, if you only have a couple holes, of course, there's nothing better than smushing that worm with your fingers. Um, but if you, you know, are starting to see a lot of them, you turn the leaf over, you see, you know, six or seven little worms on one leaf, you know you have an issue and they're going to spread quickly. They're going to grow quickly. So you want to get those sprayed um, or dusted. Um, Captain Jack's is probably going to be the best thing out there for, for that um, insect. Um, spray the bottom side of the leaf, get those little caterpillars killed quickly. Um, if you're a duster, make sure that you're dusting that bottom side of the leaf. Um, and you will have um, much quicker results um, if you if you do that um, than if you diatomaceous earth will also work on that. But if you wait a couple days just to see if they're going to go away on their own, that's not going to happen. They are only going to get worse. So if you're not um, into squishing them with your fingers and killing them off that way, you really need to get that Captain Jack's and get it on your plants right away. Several of you have asked me about seven dust. Seven Dust um, is a milder chemical than some of the other things um, that you could use to kill these off. I do not recommend Seven Dust, but if you are going to use a chemical, that's the one you probably should use. Um, it is the least toxic of the other things out there. But still, if I can persuade you to my side, um, I really would rather have you using the Diatomaceous Earth or the Captain Jack's. Um, you're going to have just as good of results and there's no toxic um, anything to you or your children or your pets. Um, nothing's going to hurt them. Um, so I just want to make sure that you, you do know I'm not, I'm not going to recommend that seven dust, um, but some of you I'm not going to be able to change your mind. So, you know, but I, I will if I can. Um, also, um, I've had several people 
this year, and I, I don't know what it is, if people are getting sentimental um, this year or exactly what, but several of you are wanting to take cuttings of a plant that was your grandma's or your grandpa's or your aunt's or something else. So I'm going to go through this. Um, these are very hard to do. Um, you know, so actually we have Isaac that is trying to do a magnolia cutting. My daughter Miranda is trying to do a rose cutting. Um, we have Barbara that is trying to do other cuttings. Um, it's just amazing how many people out there this year are wanting to do cuttings. So take note if you want to take a cutting of grandma's plant. It's not easy. So, you know, you want to make sure um, that you follow the steps and take several cuttings because most of them will not take. And so you want to do a lot of them so that your success rate is somewhat a little bit better. Okay, so what you're going to do, you're going to take a cutting at with soft tissue as much as you can. Um, if you have to go into some woody tissue, you want it to be as soft a woody tissue as possible, not far down on a limb. You're gonna cut at a node at an angle and a node is where a leaf is coming off of the branch. So you're going to cut that and you wanna dip that in a hormone powder solution. So, and if you go into the woody stem a little bit more, then you also need to score that woody stem so that the hormone powder gets into that soft tissue, green tissue layer, and then put it into your soil. A nice soft soil that is for seed starting is one of the best, but I have to say um, the better grow soil um, that we carry, and it's a regular potting mix, um, I really like it um, because the pieces of perlite are very, very, very fine, and the vermiculite is very fine, so it will adhere to the plant very well and will help take off. You also want to make sure that maybe a couple more nodes up, you have taken off the leaf and you have some hormone powder on that spot also because that's where roots will start. So those are going to be some ways to, fall, to do this. Also, a lot of people like to use a potato. I know that my daughter Miranda is doing multiple types of tries um, to see if she can um, get this rose of Grandpa Petiti's um, to grow because Grandma Petiti really, really wants one started. And so... We are trying to do that. So if you are um, trying um, to start something of your grandma or grandpa's, there's a few tips um, that might help you out. Just wanted to let everyone know, Louisville Farmers Market will start next Saturday, July 11th, um, 9 to 1, um, and it will be right downtown like before. Um, normally, they are the first Saturday of the month, but because of the 4th of July, they are going to start um on July 11th. Also, Alliance Farmers Market is going on on Saturday mornings, also from 9 to 1. And the North Canton Farmers Market is on Wednesday evenings from 3 to 7. And Tuscarora County Farmers Market is also Wednesday evenings, um, I believe, from 3 to 7 also. Just to let you know, we are open one more Sunday tomorrow. Don't forget that. And then we will be closed on Sundays. I want to thank all of you for being with us today and have a blessed week.